Hello and welcome back to Metal Machine Shop. In this video I'm going to be showing you my tailstock turret. I'll explain what it is, why you need one and how to use it. Imagine you had to make this part on your lathe. It's a small aluminium component with multiple diameters and with internal and external threads. As well as turning the outside diameters, to make this part you need to centre drill, drill a pilot hole, then drill tapping size, cut the internal thread with a first tap, then a bottom tap, and finally cut the external thread with a die, six operations in total. This requires a lot of individual tool changes, with all those tools having to be put into the tailstock chuck one after the other. For a one-off component, this is just the way it has to be. But imagine you had to make a hundred or a thousand of these parts. This would become an incredibly tedious and prohibitively time-consuming way of doing the job. With a tailstock turret, each of these tools can be fitted to the turret and quickly be presented in turn to the workpiece, saving huge amounts of time. This is the tool when I originally made it, each of the tools being held in a bespoke holder designed especially for that tool. This is the back of the turret showing the number 2 Morse taper that fits into the lathe's tailstock. The taper is fitted to the fixed body of the turret via a chunky steel bracket. These are the components laid out and we will see how these fit together later in the video. This is the base which is made from a slice of cast iron being bored in the four jaw chuck. The rotating turret part is made from a slice of free machining steel, again using the four jaw chuck. The part is reversed in the chuck to machine the outside faces. The bracket is made from a block of mild steel. It is drilled through to form the radiuses between the angled surfaces before the waste is milled away. A spring-loaded detent allows the turret to be rotated repeatedly to any one of the six individual positions. The detent is made from a brass body with a silver steel plunger. My turret has a locking handle which securely locks the turret for machining operations. The holes for the tool stations were drilled through from the headstock and then bored. Each one is provided with a grub screw to lock the tool in place. I use my combination lathe and milling machine to drill and tap the holes for the grub screws. These are some of the individual tool holders that I originally made. And the die holder. With the parts all complete, the turret can now be assembled.
I've ordered some bits and pieces to upgrade the turret. Three 6mm drill chucks and two 4mm chucks with stub arbors which will fit to the turret. To fit these to the turret I need to bore out the holes to fit. I'm starting by roughing out the holes by drilling from the headstock. This shows how the detent and locking mechanism works. I'm now using a collet chuck in the headstock to hold some slot drills. This one screws onto the spindle nose. This is an ER32 collet, 15mm diameter. It fits into the locking ring and then screws onto the chuck. I'm using slot drills to drill out the holes because I didn't have any large enough drills and these ones are too big for the drill chuck. I'm now going to bore the holes to their final size using my boring head. The taper unscrews allowing the remaining section to be held in the three jaw chuck. To hold the boring head in the chuck I'm fitting the external jaws. The jaws are numbered 1, 2 and 3 and have to be fitted into the chuck in the correct order. I'm using aluminium tabs to protect the machine surface of the boring head. This approach allows me to machine the holes in the turret to precisely the right diameter and to ensure that the bores are parallel and in line with the lathe's spindle axis. Each hole is indexed in turn and bored to the final diameter. A test fit shows that all the holes are the right size. The final hole is for the die holder. With the modification complete, the individual tools can be loaded into the chucks ready for use. 
Each tool is presented to the work in turn by rotating the turret. The detent ensures that the tool is returned to precisely the same location each time. We can now get on with making this little workpiece example. First I put a piece of aluminium bar into the three jaw chuck and machine the external diameters to size. The parting tool is used to create a recess, providing a runout for the external thread. The corners are lightly chamfered. First the centre drill. Next the pilot drill. Then the 4.3mm M5 tapping drill. As it's a blind hole at this stage, I'm using a first tap followed by a bottoming tap. For the threading, I'm rotating the chuck by hand with the motor isolated by pulling on the drive belt. The tapping must not be done under power. With the internal thread complete, I'm now using the die holder to cut the external M8 thread. Again, this is done by pulling on the drive belt. Finally, the part is parted off. If we were making a production run, then we would just go back to the start and keep going until we had as many parts as we needed. I would also be using the carriage multi-stop, but maybe I'll talk about that in another video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please like and subscribe and leave any comments or questions down below. See you next time.